Hey folks, this is Riker. And today, before we start the stream, I wanted to talk a little bit about replay value or replayability. And this is because uh, recently we spoke about a... Uh, we had a Diablo 3 review retrospective. Back in 2012, I reviewed Diablo 3 and uh, I posted a video recently, which we covered on stream, of uh, going back over that review and seeing how I still feel about certain things four years later. Uh, again, it seems some feathers were rustled when I was saying how the Diablo 2 system, the skill tree system of getting locked into a, into your skill choices and not being able to respec, and, and thus forcing you to remake a character, uh, I said that that is not replay value. That a, an important part of replay value is the value part. But we're also going to be going over an article that I wrote back in 2012, shortly after my Diablo 3 review, I uh, published this May 29th, and I'll uh, link you guys to this if you want to follow along. Defining replay value. What does it really mean? A critical factor when deciding whether or not to buy a game is its replay value, which can multiply the number of hours of entertainment you receive for your investment. It's a term that gets thrown around quite a bit, sometimes incorrectly. People tend to get caught up on the replay part of the term while neglecting the value what then does replay value really mean? Now again, this is not making a personal judgment call on what you find entertaining. Uh, you're allowed to find entertainment in doing anything at all that you want. We're talking about the design of a game and the inherent mechanics. People can take a game that isn't inherently, let's say, fun. And I'm not saying that Diablo 2 was not inherently fun. But you can take something that's not inherently fun and find fun in it through your imagination, creativity, uh, and, and just what you might find personally entertaining. We'll go on. First, a definition. Replay value, also known as replayability, is anything that adds entertainment value to playing a game or a portion of the game over again. While a number of factors can contribute to a game's replay value, they can be clumped into three categories. Factors that increase challenge, offer a different play experience, or reveal extra content. Differing play experiences. How you mechanically progress through content from a gameplay perspective can differ from playthrough to playthrough. Welcome, new raider. And in the case of Diablo, this, this revolves around the different classes. A melee warrior will play differently than a ranged spellcaster. Value is added by providing a new experience. This is where many hardcore Diablo fans say that Diablo 3 lacks the replay value of its predecessor. In Diablo 2, as players leveled up, they could allocate points in skill trees to unlock new skills or improve the skills they possessed. In Diablo 3, new skills unlock naturally as players level up and skills can be swapped at any time. The key distinction is that in D2, the, deci the decisions made are set in stone. There is no easy way to change your mind and spend your skill points differently. In D3, you can experiment at will. Now, I know that features have been added to D2 to allow for respecs, uh, more so than over a decade ago. Uh, but I'm thinking back more to old, original Diablo 2 Lord of Destruction experience. Like, I think when I stopped playing, which was still like years after Diablo 2 released, I think there might have been like one way to respec, like you could have gotten one respec, maybe, if you jumped through a bunch of hoops. I really did enjoy the Diablo 2 skill tree system. It's, it's the inability to respec is what I didn't like about it, but I enjoyed the skill tree system. If we had free respecs, if we had the same respec system as D3, but with D2 skill tree system, I'd be happy with that, I'd be perfectly happy with that. So again, back then, this was a big argument. Back then, the big argument was, well, I got my character to level 70, or sorry, level 60 at the time. I can change my skills at will. There's no reason for me to ever make a new character. This game has no replay value. Next paragraph. Unfortunately, this is the kind of argument that neglects the value part of replay value. Yes, D2 made you replay the game in order to spend your skill points differently, but this was not added value. In D2, you were punished for experimenting, or for simply being new to the game and not knowing how to wisely spend your skill points. 
As you reach the higher difficulty settings, you would realize that your current character was a dead end and would be forced to create a new one that, frankly, didn't suck. While it can be argued that value is added for veterans who know exactly what they're doing, these are the same veterans that could get a character to high level in a matter of days, if not hours. What value then is added if the process of replaying is sped through in order to reach the same point at which a Diablo 3 character would be who simply swapped his skills? This is what I remember guys, it was all about the power leveling, right? You get power leveled in a matter of hours, days max, and you're, you're back with a maxed character. So, where's the value there? Where's the value? The only distinction that's going on is that in Diablo 3 it happens in seconds, and in Diablo 2 it takes hours of being power leveled, right? Now here's the thing guys, this is where, this is where there's the, uh, the difference in mentality. It seems that the people that really enjoyed the, what they called the replay value in this regard in D2, these aren't the people that would be power level. These aren't the people that would be following builds. These are people that like experimenting themselves. And I am not denigrating that playstyle. That's awesome. If you find joy in that, like I would never I would never criticize anyone for finding joy and entertainment in anything unless that thing is harmful to other people. So all the more power to you if you love theory crafting, if you love re you know, rebuilding your character level by level, and like, I guess, re-leveling your character in a completely different uh, skill tree or build and seeing how it progresses from low to high level. But let's face it, most people in Diablo 2, the community, the multiplayer experience was being power leveled. The game started, just like in Diablo 3, the game starts in Diablo 3 at level 70. In Diablo 2, the game started in roughly the 70s as well, I think it was. Like, you would get power leveled to a certain level, like around 70-ish, I think, mid-70s, before you started to be somewhat able to hold your own. It's the same system, guys. It's just transferring Paragon levels into pre-Paragon levels of D2. Like, levels like 80-plus in D2 were Paragon levels in D3. Like, there came a point where you got diminishing returns on your skills. You needed to unlock certain skills in order to have a base build going, and then after that, it was just becoming more powerful, and powerful enough to keep up with the endgame content. But that was the crux of D2's multiplayer. Like, again, I'm not knocking anyone who played the game differently or who played it as a solo experience or who took their time progressing through the game or played it as a single player atmospheric experience but the community at large did not play this game that way for the community at large diablo 2 was all the end game it was trading which diablo 3 doesn't have it was you know the bail runs the ubers the cow levels whatever other runs it was uh the dueling and so for what was the vast majority of the D2 player base, the process of making a new character and just wasting a few hours of your time being power leveled by a friend to get him to a place where you can actually play him was not added value. If it was added value for you because you enjoyed that process, that's, that's fine, but it's not the game mechanics that are adding that value to you. You're finding value in something through your own creativity and imagination. You are working your way through a limitation in the system and finding pleasure in it. Uh, another reason is that back then that we had less competition in games. We didn't have 200 Steam games at our disposal. We didn't have Netflix, YouTube. We have culturally, collectively as a, a, a as a people, our attention spans, our patience is severely diminished now because we have so much competing for our attention. People don't have the patience as much nowadays to spend those few hours remaking a character every time, you know, you want to make a new character. So back then, we were more inclined to use our imagination, use our creativity to find fun in what we had. When I was playing Diablo 2, I was an adolescent. I, I didn't have money to buy games. I had Diablo... I had a handful of games. My option was play Diablo 2, uh, play StarCraft, play Unreal Tournament. That's, those were basically my options. So, 
I didn't have a million other games that I could play. A million, I didn't, there was no YouTube back then, so I'm gonna find ways to make, to find enjoyment out of this experience. I'm more inclined to do that than just go to a game that naturally offers more features. So the value that people found, it, this is my point guys, the value that you found, that people found in remaking a new character, is not thanks to the game system, it's thanks to yourselves, and your creativity, your imagination, uh, and your personal tastes. It is a limitation, not a feature, that you can't respec your character. And it is a limitation born from the RPG genre, dating back to Dungeons and Dragons. Alright? It is an antiquated system for a computer action RPG. In a game like D&D, having free respecs would be, would be disastrous. It would ruin the game completely. Why? Because it is a slow, methodical game, or slower and more methodical than an action RPG. Uh, so for anyone who's not aware, a tabletop RPG, Dungeons and Dragons, existed in the 70s. Before computer games existed, Dungeons and, Dungeons and Dragons existed. Welcome New Raider. It was an RPG. You picked a class, uh, if you were a wizard, you got spells. As a wizard, you had such a wide range of spells. You can be immune to fire, you can deal fire damage. There was so much utility that, okay, if I can freely respec, I know I'm going up against a fire boss, a fire enemy, I'll just take the spell that makes me immune to fire. If I'm going up against a poison enemy, I'll take the spell that makes me immune to poison. But you had to select a limited number of spells from a huge pool, so... That, that was part of the game. It was, okay, well, I don't have that spell, and I can't easily acquire that spell. An action RPG, you're not gonna, you're not gonna respec your skills before every fight. The fights come like this. You're never not fighting, basically, in an action RPG. Yeah, sometimes before Andariel, you might equip uh, something yeah. that makes you resistant to poison or something. Welcome New Raider. Like, there will be situations where you'll want to change up gear or a skill but like you don't have the skills in the diablo series that make you like completely immune to poison you don't have the same super powerful spells super situationally powerful spells that's the thing with with dnd there are spells that are incredibly situationally powerful so if you encounter a situation where you can use that spell then bam that's amazing but odds are you're not in every fight gonna have available to you the one spell that would be super important and like make you just god mode through that encounter and if you were able to respec then it would make the game just stupidly easy so the rpg genre was born with DD. &D. that's why DD &D had no respec so computer games imitated DD. &D. computer rpgs were based on dungeons and dragons dungeons and dragons had no respecs computer rpgs had no respecs action rpgs like diablo 2 were based on slower paced RPGs like Baldur's Gate. So just through carrying over the system, no respects, there just wasn't even the thought of including respects. Like it, it no one even thought of it as a thing. Like it was just for 30 years, again from the 70s, 30 20, 30 years of RPGs never had respects, so why would we even consider adding respects into Diablo 2? It was an antiquated system. Let me tell you a story, guys. A little girl is cooking Thanksgiving ham with her mom. And she sees that the mom takes the ham and cuts off the last quarter of it. The butt of the ham. The, she cuts off a quarter of the ham and throws it in the garbage. And cooks the ham. And the little girl asks, Well, mom, why, are, why did you cut off that part of the ham? And the mom says, Well, that's, that's just how we do it. That's how my mom did it. You just cut off that part of the ham. And the little girl asks, But why? What's, what's the reason? And the mom says, You know what, I guess I never really found out. Let's go ask grandma. I'm sure there's a good reason. Uh, I just, I know, I'm just following her recipe. I was just, I watched her doing it as I grew up, and, and so I've been doing the same thing. So let's go ask grandma. Uh, by the way, welcome new raiders. So the mom and the daughter go to talk to grandma, and the mom's like, all expecting vindication, like to justify why, you know, the ham's getting cut off, and so smugly she approaches, you know, her mom, and she's like, So, mom, why don't you, you tell, uh, tell my daughter why we cut off the back of the ham? And the grandma says, Dear, I cut off the back of the ham because 
My pot was too small for the full ham. Blindly following things that were done a certain way leads you to banality. You keep doing things without evolving just because things were done that way. She had the bigger pot. There was no reason for her to keep cutting off that ham. There was no reason to no longer have... Res uh, like res <laughs> This is the respect argument. Games evolve. The industry evolves. There were a lot of holdovers from the past. D3 is an evolution on Diablo 2. D3 realized, hey, there's no point in having this locked-in system. People just remake a character, get pow power-leveled, waste three hours, four hours a day of their time, and their friends' time, because the friends don't like power-leveling, but it was a system. It's like, okay, I'll P-level your character, you P-level mine, we're gonna waste ten hours of our time doing this bullshit just to get another high-level character. That's not fun! That's wasted time. Again, though, if you enjoyed going through the process of actually leveling your character and not getting power leveled, all the more power to you. But, sh do you not agree that we should have the option, right? Like, if you want to play that way, then just be disciplined and don't use the respec system. That's what challenge runs are in different games. There are challenge runs, like, in, in uh, RuneScape, there are challenge runs that you're not allowed to use... Uh, you know, like Iron Man challenge. You you can only use like self-found gear and stuff. Again, that's creativity. It's imagination. If you want to self-impose restrictions, by all means. No one is saying that you're not allowed to find that fun. However, don't make everyone else have to work within restrictions that needn't be there and can be worked around through silliness like power leveling. Right? That's the point, guys. That is the point. Final thoughts. Anyone wishing to make an argument about replay value must first ask himself, am I replaying this content because it is entertaining to do so, or because I have to in order to keep playing the game? If your answer is the latter, that's not value, that's tedium. Consider the thoughts of Blizzard Community Manager Bashiok. Welcome, new raider. Who remembers Bashiok, guys? Who remembers the good old Bashiok days? So, quote Bashiok. Well, if we're killing replay value by not making people have to level completely new characters just to try out a new build, we are okay with that. Leveling characters is cool, and some people legitimately enjoy that process, such as Bashiok, and we agree it can be fun and would still like to find ways to reward people who enjoy leveling additional characters. But being required to, being required to do it just to try out some different skills is no longer acceptable to us. That's a level of masochism we just don't care to revisit. We thank the 90s for their contributions to game design and the uh, 90s being, being the, the 1990s. We thank the 1990s for their contribution to game design and the crush player's soul dungeon master mentality. But we're moving on. We have this crazy notion that games shouldn't punish you for trying to enjoy them. Fact of the matter is, though, that the longevity of Diablo 2 was not made by leveling characters. You can get a character to 80 in a matter of hours. The longevity was from experimentation, customization, and the randomized item drops needed to perfect them. Longevity in Diablo is from exploration, character customization, and more specifically, killing monsters to see what they drop, not leveling. So, my final concluding paragraph there is, When assessing replay value, Diablo 2 makes a great barometer, as the game's longevity speaks for itself. However, it's important to think critically about which ingredients in a game add to its replay value and distinguish those from ingredients... And, is, and distinguish those ingredients from the ones that simply force you to play through content again. The good news. This is most definitely not the death of the Diablo franchise by no means, because we have a lot of job openings for Diablo-related, for a Diablo-related project. We don't know if it's an expansion, we don't know if it's Diablo 4, 